It's always kind of fun when you come home from work and find a package on the front porch. It looks like an axe. This should be a Collins Homestead double bit. Ordered it off of Marketplace. I think I got a. I think I got it for like 15 or 20 bucks. Wasn't a bad deal. It looked all there. Um, looked like it had been neglected for a while. But get this packaging off. It's always kind of fun to see how people wrap these things up for shipping. You never know what you're going to get. This one was a whole lot of bubble wrap and packing tape with some cardboard over the over the bits. Now, this thing looks like it's in pretty good shape. The head is quite loose. Handle is covered in lacquer, which I despise. But we'll fix that. Hopefully we can make this thing look Look a whole lot better. That's um, not too good. We're gonna have to fix that. We'll see what we can do. This was a really thin wooden wedge, so I was able to drill it out and drive out that old handle pretty easy. Um, probably helped that the <laughs> head was already a little bit loose. This one I'm using my wire wheel to just go over the surface rust on the non-painted parts, being careful not to remove any of that original paint. I've tried several different methods, <laughs> you know, trial and error, just figuring out how to restore these things over the last few years, and um, definitely do not want to use a wire wheel on that original paint, it will disappear, which is probably pretty obvious to most people. Now the buffing wheel on the other hand, don't put any compound on that and go over the paint and it will definitely shine it up, get rid of a lot of the dirt and grime that's built up on there. I'm not going over the sticker, but um, this thing cleaned up pretty well. Once we got that surface rust gone, I came over here and used a palm sander to knock off the rest of it on the non-painted parts. We're putting an edge on this thing. These double bit axes were um, popular because you could have one edge that was a lot sharper, had a much sharper angle on there, and you use that for felling. But if you were worried about your edge, you could flip around to the other side and it had a little bit more of a, a duller angle on it. And uh, you could work a lot longer without worrying about ruining your, ruining your edge. Um, but the noise in the background, I'm reapplying the burr on my scraper before I get rid of this lacquer finish. Now I really tried to cut these clips down to be shorter. These videos were getting a little long, a little too long for people's attention spans. So hopefully this is a little bit better. Once the lacquer was gone, I went to the sander. I used a 60 grit hand sanding pad to clean it up a little bit before I went to a 320 grit. And I kind of tried to make this an octagon shape. It's not super strong, but you can feel it in the hand for sure. Generally, you would use a rasp if you want to make a, a solid octoc octagonal handle. Sorry for my stuttering there. But... Still, I just kind of focused on the lines and it turned out kind of cool. Last thing I did was I focused on the top of the handle. This thing had been pressed on and had a little bit of a ledge built up, so I smoothed that out for a little bit more of a tapered fit. I did drive the head down about a quarter of an inch, maybe a third of an inch, farther than it had been originally. Now I used a piece of white oak as a as a wedge I had a piece that I cut out on my bandsaw earlier using some linseed oil on this wedge once it dries it's pretty sticky and holds real well I've had really good luck with it once I got this thing driven all the way in I realized I had about a 
quarter of an inch on either side that was exposed. I obviously made my wedge a little bit too short. So once I got the excess cut off, I took a piece of black walnut and cut out two little triangular wedges and put those in on either side. It looks pretty cool. Once those were driven in, I used the 60 grit sandpaper to make everything flush. Once everything was nice and flush, I um, cleaned it up a little bit with my chisel. When you're really driving that wedge in, sometimes you'll get a little bit of overhang on the wood, and so the chisel cleans it up pretty well. Get the shape of everything looking right. Now once I have that how I like it, I use a hand file and go over it to get rid of those swirls from the 60 grit sandpaper. Once I have that cleaned up, I go to a 400 grit sandpaper and go over it one more time. And that really just helps give the wood a nice, smooth surface for whenever you put the oil in there. I'm just as guilty as everyone else when it comes to wanting the wedge to look as pretty as possible. And here it comes. Now the uh, white oak, I'm sure it was just the grain pattern. It kind of split a little bit on me whenever I drove it in, but you could see that, how it's cracked a few places in there, but I really thought the grain looked cool. I was really happy with it. So now I'm using a mixture of, it's a oil-based walnut stain with tongue oil and boiled linseed oil. It's really my go-to on stain and handles. It just really pops. It's my wife coming home from work, so disregard the PDA, but you have to deal with it because I love her. Once I get this all treated, I let it sit to dry. And here it is. I was really happy with how it came out. I wanted to make sure that uh, the hang was solid, so I took it to a tree in the back of the yard here and took a few good wax on either side just to make sure. And things solid. I'm happy with it. Didn't move an inch or a millimeter. There's my retired police dog. His uh, lounging place is just so happens to be right next to my axe I use, or my stump that I use for displaying my axes. And I've uh, got a few still shots here so you can see what it looks like, but hope you enjoyed it. Stick around for the next one. Thank you.